During the course of the second season of The Walking Dead, the show was still finding its footing. Yes, it was based on a comic series, but it was already starting to deviate greatly from its comic book counterpart. How accurate or inaccurate were the storylines going to really be? What could they improve upon from the comic storylines to make them better in the show? All of these thoughts and questions were sparking among fans of the comics, and the first great change of events that would impact the future came in Season 2, Episode 7, pretty much dead already. This episode shocked both first-time viewers and readers of the comic series, and in today's video, I'm going to be recapping the episode, giving my analysis on it, and explaining why this episode gave fans of The Walking Dead the first true shock of the show. But before I get into the video, I want to wish everybody a happy new year and hope you all had a happy holiday. This year has been absolutely huge for my channel and I want to thank you all for that and tell you about a great deal that my friends over at Surfshark VPN are doing. For those of you who still aren't using a VPN, I'd highly recommend taking advantage of this great holiday deal. Surfshark VPN allows you to surf the web safely, encrypting your data so that way you aren't being spied on by any unwanted visitors. You can also use Surfshark VPN to change your location so there aren't any location restrictions on streaming services. I've been watching tons of new shows on Disney+, Netflix, Hulu, etc. all because of Surfshark VPN. I also have YouTube TV, but you can only use that when you're in your home region, so when I'm traveling or just away from home, I can set the VPN near my home and still watch it. Check the link in the description and use promo code THRIFTY for 85% off and an extra 3 months completely free for this exclusive holiday deal. Thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video, now let's get on with the episode. We start the episode off with a bunch of grainy, dead characters eating breakfast when Glenn looks conflicted, looking from Maggie to Dale. Maggie shakes her head at him while Dale nods at him, so Glenn decides to drop a bombshell and tell everyone that there's walkers in the barn. Shane and Rick begin fighting about what to do next. Shane suggests that they leave, but Carol says they can't because they haven't found Sophia yet. Daryl comes to bat for Carol, saying that he's close to finding Sophia, but Shane says that even if he'd found her, she'd probably run the other way just by looking at him, which is probably fair to say. Rick stops this fight from going any further, and Dale reminds everybody that Herschel views these things as people. Shane inspects the barn, reaching for his gun, but he's reminded that it's not there. Glenn tries to talk to Maggie, so she does, by smashing an egg onto his head. Carl talks with Lori about how he can't wait to find Sophia, and how she's really gonna like the farm once they find her. Daryl, who's injured, wants to go out and find Sophia, but Carol tells him to rest because she doesn't even know if Sophia is still out there. Daryl gets pissed about this and storms out of the barn, calling Carol a stupid bitch after she says that she doesn't want to lose Daryl too. Dale talks with Andrea about her recent decisions, specifically her decisions about Shane. She says that she and Rick are going to go out and look for Sophia as she packs up the guns. Andrea insists that she's fine, but Dale knows she's not thinking clearly. Dale asks Glenn to go and get him some water as he zips up the bag of guns. Rick goes to talk to Herschel about the walkers in the barn. Herschel says that he wants Rick's group to leave by the end of the week. Rick says that the farm is special and they have shelter there, and they need it because Lori is pregnant. Herschel still insists they leave, even after Rick offers to help around the farm, and Rick nicely asks him to reconsider. Rick then goes outside to defuse the situation with Shane, but in effect it only gets worse until Rick tells Shane that Lori is pregnant. Shane congratulates Rick on his new baby, and Rick thanks him, kinda. Inside, Herschel talks with Maggie, who actually seems to be on Rick's side in this whole situation. She reasons with Herschel, saying that everything he's saying to the group is going against the things he told her when he raised her. Glenn's name is brought up, Herschel referring to him as the Asian boy. Is this about you and the Asian boy? Do you want no, me to? And Maggie says that it's not about him, it's not about them, it's about what's right. Herschel goes and asks for Rick's help with something while Shane goes to talk with Lori. Shane says that Rick told him about how she's pregnant and that he knows it's his. Lori says that even if it is his, he's not going to be the father of it and there's nothing he can do to change that. Carl then talks with Shane about how they should stay and find Sophia. Shane says that if that's what he wants, then that's what's going to happen, but they have to make some changes in order to do that. 
So Shane goes looking for the guns, but he can't find them. Herschel takes Rick to the river, who says that if his people are gonna stay here, then they have to abide by Herschel's rules, and his rules are to treat the walkers as people who can be restored. Daryl and Carol take a walk, and Carol asks him why he's looking for Sophia so much. He says that he believes she's still out there, and then he talks to the audience and writers of this season by also saying, What else I got to do? Glenn catches up with Maggie and explains why he told the rest of the group about the walkers. It's because he remembered how dangerous they truly were, and also because he didn't want her to be in danger. He'd rather her be pissed off at him and alive than liking him and dead. Maggie sees his reasoning and kisses him. Shane finds Dale and demands he hands over the guns. Dale says that the guns aren't going to keep them safe, and Shane doesn't want to listen. Dale threatens to shoot Shane but doesn't, saying that this world, and the way it is, is where Shane truly belongs. Shane arrives back at the house, handing out guns and saying that things need to change around here, applying the right logic to everybody around when Rick and Herschel arrive back with the walkers. Shane runs over, giving his speech, once again applying the right logic to what everybody needs to hear, saying that living, breathing people can't survive from shots to the heart and lungs. Rick yells, pleading with Shane to stop what he's doing, but he doesn't, and he opens the barn, forcing the others to conform to Shane's tactics and kill the walkers in the barn. Rick stands there, stunned as the walkers seem to stop coming out of the barn. Herschel sits on his knees in disbelief as one final walker comes out of the barn. The camera lifts up, revealing it to be Sophia. Carol runs over and Daryl stops her. The group stands there, no one, not even Shane, willing to be the one to finish what he started. Rick steps forward, aiming the gun at a 45 degree angle as per usual, and pulls the trigger. So the first thing about this episode that stands out to me is how good this show is. Don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of this show, even of the later seasons, but going back to the early days of the show really shows you just how different it used to be. Every second of this episode I was at the edge of my seat, every conversation was exciting and important, and just the overall tone of the series was just so much different back then. And the funniest part of all this was that season 2 was at one point thought to be the worst season of the show. Back in like 2016 when season 6 was on, season 2 stood out as the sore thumb as the worst season of the show, and if this episode was in the worst season of the show, then it really shows you just how great these earlier seasons of the show were. I don't like to be the guy who says that the show peaked early on and the later seasons suck, a lot of people do that plenty enough for all of us, but watching these early episodes really reminds me of that, so I just wanted to point it out just this once. But in the episode, one of the greatest key themes is Rick's struggle keeping the group together. He wants the group to stay at the farm because it's safer than the rest of the world, and because Lori is pregnant, but he knows that Shane isn't going to see eye to eye with Herschel, causing a rift between Herschel's family and the group. Rick tries his best to see things the way Herschel does because he knows it's the best decision for the group, but Rick ultimately can't juggle these two decisions, and Shane takes matters into his own hands. Shane also shows how great of a manipulator he is in this episode. Dale calls him out twice in this episode, both to Andrea and to Shane himself. He tells Andrea that Shane isn't who she thinks he is, and she needs to be careful. He then confronts Shane to his face, saying that he's perfect for the world the way that it is right now. Dale says that while he may not be fit to live forever in these times, he's perfectly content with that. In Shane's speeches, he brings up having to save Sophia in order to gain Carl's trust. He also brings up how walkers killed Amy in order to get Andrea's trust. But when it comes time for action, Shane forgets about these things, instead showing that he's really fueling his own thoughts and emotions. He yells at Carol, saying that Sophia is dead, and that they're wasting time looking for her, even though he just said to Carl that they need to protect the farm for when Sophia gets back. This whole scene shows us all we need to know about Shane, especially at the end, when he can't even pull the trigger on Sophia, forcing Rick to be the true leader and step up. Now with all this being said, I find myself agreeing with Shane during a majority of this episode. It is crazy that Herschel looks at the walkers as people who can be saved. It's not safe to keep a barn full of walkers right next to where they're all sleeping. Obviously the way he goes about it could have been a bit better, but it's scenes like this that I look back to and just see how people could have agreed with Shane and his logic at this point in the show. Another aspect of this episode that I really loved was Maggie. Maggie in the current and later seasons, if I'm being honest, kind of bores me. She seems very one-dimensional and doesn't get a whole lot of character development, but it's watching these earlier episodes that reminds me, oh right, Maggie is a good character. 
Herschel seems very set in his ways, asking Rick and the group to leave, and Maggie's the one who says to Herschel that not everything he's saying is making sense, and she makes Herschel realize that he can compromise with Rick. She also sticks up for herself when Shane approaches with the guns, and she even works for her own compromise with Glenn. Moments like this really grew Maggie's character and plants the seeds as to how she would eventually grow and become a great leader in her own right. But the true reason why this episode came as the first true shock of The Walking Dead was because of Sophia's death. Sophia is a comic book character that survives up until the very end of the series, but in the show, having her walk out of the barn was hugely consequential for a number of reasons. Number one, this was a giant change from the comic book, and they would run into a number of problems down the road trying to fix this change. And number two, this served as the first giant character development for Carol, a character who did die early on in the comics, but survives until the very end of the show. This was really one of the first major deviations the show made from its comic book counterpart. This trend would obviously continue down the line, sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse, but this episode surprised and shocked both fans of the comic book and the growing fan base of the TV show. And that's pretty much dead already. What are your thoughts on the episode? Let me know down in the comments below and let me know which episode you want me to cover next. If you're not already, consider hitting that subscribe button and leaving a like on the video if you enjoyed it. If you do, then I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.